Hey coach, so glad you found us on YouTube. Um, I have been coaching for 30 years, so I know how many great resources there are out there. I, I tried to bring them together at teachhoops.com. Let me help you become a better basketball coach. All sorts of great resources on there. And even the best part is the community, the one-on-one -on -one calls with me, office hours, you name it. You know, I've been there. You can see behind all the balls. You can see a couple of my players have played in the NBA. I am here to help. I am here to serve. So go over and check it out. Click above, down below, teachhoops.com. Enjoy the video. All right. So Ram and Veer, Coach, so tell me – so we're not even doing an intro on this one. We're just – because because we're just throwing it – we're throwing it in the sea of mystics. So tell me what Ram and Veer are. Like, right, I'm looking at our show notes. And it says Ram Veer. I have no idea what we're talking about. Okay. Well, I got three different plays here for you. But here's, here's in a nutshell, if you're looking at frame three here, how many times, and I learned this early in my career, you're running a ball screen and you're getting blitzed or you're being hard hedged and they're just giving you fits and you can't get into your offense and get into what you truly want to get into. Oh, they're doubling you? Does it work against a double? Well, yes, yeah. that's why we're going to do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if they're double teaming you, it's like, okay, well, you can't just keep running that same pick and roll up top and they're just going to keep blitzing it over and over and over again, right? Right. So how can we free that man up? And that's called ram action. So number three. Where did that come from? Can I ask where that came from? Uh, I, you know what? I don't know where that came from, to be honest, but okay. it's, 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 you're setting a down screen like a Ram, I guess. So that okay. would be. Okay. I, I, I mean, I just, I've heard it. I mean, I've never used, that's not in my vocabulary per se. Okay. With team Ram. Um, we have other words probably we use for that. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I just wondered. I just, uh, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I've just, you know, 20 years of coaching, you pick up different terminology you and you have no idea what you're even <laughs> why. You do. You do. <laughs> so number three comes down and just sprints into a, a down screen for five, right? And what that does is now – or number five is going to sprint into that ball screen, okay? Right. Um, so five ha X5 has got to fight around a down screen first, um, it, whether he's coming this way, so he's trailing, right? And that's when you can get some of those slip actions because because he's got to be he's got to you find the slip actions i i find i find it's hard for them to do the slip action but once they get it there's openings i mean if you run something like this it's extremely easy if you watch the nba they run you know people call it ghost action now right, right. we used to call it pick and bobs or, right yeah or just pick and slips now it's yes. called ghost and the reason it's so difficult is because they start with this ram action Right, and a sprint up screen, and then X five's got a sprint to match, and that's when it really opens up the pop. If X, if number five wants to pop or or the roll, so okay. Uh, so there. So anyways, that that's essentially that's ram action. Now uh, veer action is when you set a ball screen, okay, and then you are going to go into a second screen, okay. So one would come off, let's say, and it's coming off the the initial ball screen. And then five's going to set the ball screen and then set a second screen away, base, a basic pin down, and two could fill up. And then that might be a wide open shot. Simple okay. actions, right? Yes. The Golden State Warriors run a ton of this, by the way, and they run it for Steph and Clay. So <laughs> it's a little bit better than everyone listening to the podcast. Those two are a little bit better than anyone you're probably coaching. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Right. So, but you know, they'll run, they'll typically run, Steve Kerr runs this at the like end of a quarter, great right. end of the quarter play, great after timeout play, great something because there's multiple options. So the first play I'm going to give you is 21, 21 Ram out. Okay. And here's the Ram number yep. three, sets the Ram screen down here on X five. Okay. Number five is going to sprint up for a ball screen, but just as a decoy action, number one is going to dribble entry uh, into a DHO with number two. Okay. okay. Um, now kind of like in Chicago action in, in frame two, two is going to come off this ball screen here. Okay. Um, and roll. So this is, this is basically pistol. Uh, right. One comes off, DH zones with two, and then two is coming off the ball screen by five. Which is a good action. That's a good high school action, to be honest with you. Correct. It's, and it's, yeah. it's something you can run out of your transition. Um, it's something that you can uh, kind of mix in with your Chicago action, good three-man action. On it's, that a, it's an AAU action. You see it a lot in the summer. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. So, again, you, you come off five rolls. Two is attacking. Now, the timing thing here, don't forget about number three. Number three set this and then is now kind of setting up his man down here off the Ram screen. So as number two comes off the pistol action, 
number three is now coming off a pin down screen by number four. And this was always Clay Thompson. So Clay Thompson would come down here, set this pick, and then boom, is coming off. And this would always be a wide open shot. Now, right. if the defense wants to cheat, what do you got? If X4 has got it, oh, he sees this coming, he steps out. Well, now he can, number four can slip in there too. So it's right. a, a pick and slip action. Um, so basically what you got is you got five on the roll, you got three on the pin down, you could have four on the slip, and you might have number one on the throwback. So you have four options. I love that. I well, love play. I love stuff that you have more than, more than one or two things. You have, yes, you have reads at this point. Yep, and again, it just yeah, exactly. You're just reading who's tagging who, and 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 what's going to happen here is X one once again has got to come in here and tag this, and that's when one's going to be over. So we're really reading this tag man, and that'll tell us what we want to do. We right. can see this on the on the strong side of the floor easy, but we should be reading that on the weak side. But number two could have a shot too, right here. So okay, yep. So what's that's the that's, that's the first one. Okay. Um, now, if you want to disguise, this is floppy ram out follow veer. So now this kind of gives you a little bit of both. I like this initial action for three and two. That tends to be a good high school action just to get open on the wings. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if, if you're like having scissors. trouble, if you're having trouble entering the ball to the wing, just start off in a, in a double stack low and just run some crisscross floppy action and then boom, you can get into your offense. You can. I mean, again, I'm trying to give stuff to, to, to different ranges of listeners, but this is a good, the second one is a good, you know, you know, double. it will get you open up against 80% of the teams probably at least initially. Yeah. So initially you might even have a shot off this floppy. Action. You might. Because uh, X3 and X2 could, you know, switch and miscommunicate and something happens there. And then all of a sudden, uh, you got a wide open shot. So it's basic floppy action for those who, who are listening. Right. Um, and we'll make an entry pass to either two or three. It doesn't really matter. Um, but one will go opposite and then go immediately set a Ram screen. Okay. Uh, afterwards. So we pass the ball here in, in, in frame number one to number two. And then number one is going to go down and set a Ram screen for number four. Okay. Same thing. Number four is now sprinting up, okay, to set a ball screen. Now, in frame two here, this one's kind of a little bit different. Number one, instead of coming off the action that we did before with the pin down on the, on the, uh, the weak side, he's now going to come back to the strong side off five screen. Okay? So we might have that for a shot, and that could be something different um, to throw at the defense. Right? This like is that. another one of those good ATO late game play calls. If yeah, because it's um, giving some options too. That's what I like. Yep. You get to skip so, even on that, yeah. Now, if you do go to the corner, this is what I call corner action. This is my terminology. This is just an automatic read. If we've passed the ball to one and we don't have a shot and we got five right here, he just sets a back screen for two, a little rip screen, okay? okay. Yeah. And we might have that for a pass there to two cutting if X5 doesn't step up. And then number – uh, five steps into an immediate ball. So you're playing a two man game at that point. You're like, I love those two man games late like that. Like you're clearing two a little bit off that screen. Correct. And, and then, and, yeah. and you can't, you can't double this because right. X five has got to help on the rip screen. Otherwise that's going to be a wide open land. Right. And if it does, so now that opens up number one driving here because they can't they can't trap that oh i love that i love that action I mean, and you have to do that in the corner and, and i yes. do that if we get in the corner that's automatic in every play that we do it's just like a, a you know kind of a little princeton principal pete Car Carrill. Or, i like that i like that yeah. yeah old school nba stuff right there it is uh, so now if we don't pass the ball to number one in the corner and number two keeps it remember we had four come up to set that ram screen right so now four sets that Ram screen and two is coming off. One is filling behind. This is where we go veer. So remember a veer action is a ball screen into a second pin down screen. So two is attacking here. Okay. Say that, say that again for the listeners again. So the veer screen again, the veer screen is when, if you see here, number four is going to come up, sprint up into a ball screen. Yep. And it's going to sprint into a second pin down screen. Okay. So it's a screen and then another screen. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So now what you're doing, two is attacking here. I think I got, oh no, I didn't have yep. one more frame, but two is attacking here. And then one is lifting up and you got possibly that throwback. And then number five can duck in, seal kind of um, 
He can either seal man to clear a path for number two for a land, or we could just duck the ball down into number five here with deep position in the post. Um, and if you have four here, we could just throw the throw back here to one and four could just space afterwards. Okay. So yeah, you got like that. I like that. I got to convince four to set double screen, uh, two screens, but that's, <laughs> that's a different, that's, that's a whole hey, You know, <laughs> the can... thing about that, you know, what I do is I put a guy, if you have, everybody's got a player that they want to hide, who's a big body and yeah. you want just to go and set two screens. That's a perfect play. Run some veer action. Do you have any, do you have any tidbits on setting screens? Uh, <laughs> as far as teaching because you know, it's it, it's a hard thing to teach it is like well, to properly I, to properly set a good screen i think the biggest thing well i mean one of the number one things for me is sprinting into a ball screen that's that's the biggest thing i think that's the biggest challenge is getting your bigs to sprint into ball screens because they all want to jog at their own pace and and when they do that what happens right uh, i love that idea like and that's where you can hold them accountable like, are you sprint? You're not sprinting into. I love that. I love that. If That's they a golden sprint nugget. Into a ball screen, then they can't hedge us or trap us at all. Right. And the whole reason we're running a ram screen is so they can't trap us. So yeah, if you're not sprinting, you, you know, I got a, I got a seat over here on the bench for you. Yep. There's a, there's a nice <laughs> warm know. one. There's a nice warm one right next to me. Yes. Okay. So let's do the last one here, coach. Yeah. Last one is ram out veer again. Um, I'll just make this one simple. Number three comes. Now you got. This is one of my favorite plays and one of the most simple things. Instead of running just a basic uh, pick and roll at the top here, right. you got to spread off. And I know it looks crazy um, for the people that are watching. But oh, it no does. You got, you, got, you got four colors going on, Coach. I do. I do. So, so let me define the colors here. Blue is your ram screen, and that's okay. your ram out action. So I okay. call it ram out when we go down to set the ram screen, and then we come out and exit off the pin down. So that's okay. the blue is ram out. The red is veer action. I should have probably started with this. So the red is the veer action where we sprint up off the ram action, set a ball screen, and then go set a, a second ball screen for two. Okay. So as one comes off, he can have two here for a shot or he can have three here for a shot. Okay. Now, if we don't have a shot, then we go into what I call go action, where five is now going to rescreen. And two is going to come off in hammer action, and four is going to set a back screen. All these plays I'm giving you, just heads up, coaches, great after timeout plays and great end of the game plays. This, this one's a great one for that because it just so so. And this one doesn't look like it takes too long to set up. No, this this is this is now okay. <laughs> this is this is one thing that coaches get confused too. This is a play that you know you could run with 10, 12 seconds left in a game. Right. So you have to be cognizant of how much time's left. And how long is this play going to take to develop? And yeah, that, that's players? really important. That is important um, right. for people moving forward. Yes. So what I like is you got here, you got one option, two option. You might even have this option here, three. If, if, if uh, you know, number five here, two can also slip, right? So we're always, so the great thing about all these screens is there's slip opportunities too. It's putting so much pressure on the defense. But again, you got the weak side flare or hammer action going here on to end the play perfect so where do where do so okay so let's talk about your library where do they find this i will put again in the show notes down below these pdfs and the um for people listening and um on youtube i'll put it down below so they can find it but where so where would this is this his own book is this in something else where would they find this yep yep the i have a book that is just ram and veer actions specifically okay. So you get everything from drills and plays that is everything Ram. So, um, okay. yeah, it's called Ram. Yeah. It's, I think it's just the Ram playbook. I think Ram playbook. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I will. I'll put a link down below for it. That's awesome. I, I didn't Ram know. And veer, I think it's Ram and Veer action. Playbook. Ram and Veer action. Awesome. Thanks coach. Hey coach. I'm glad you enjoy that. Let me know how I can help you become a better basketball coach, win some championships like this, win some rings like that. Let me know how I can help you. Doesn't matter what level you're at. I have been there. I've experienced it. Let me help you. Teachhoops.com is one way that we can help you do that.